Starting your own practice is hard for many chiropractors. It's riddled with both struggles and successes. But here at the Chiropractic Philanthropist, we make it easy by having chiropreneurs and entrepreneurs share their struggles and lessons learned in life and business so that you don't have to make the same mistakes. And now here's your host, Dr. Ed Osborne. Did you know that 51% of adults want to lose weight? This means the market for weight loss is 72 times the size of the chiropractic market, and ChiroThin gives you the ability to tap into and capture part of that for your practice. That's why ChiroThin is the weight loss cash and new patient machine. To get more information or to test ChiroThin in your office, go to ChiroThin.com and click on the pricing tab. All right, TCP listeners, I have an incredible guest today, and that is actually Dr. Brent Thierry. Dr. Brent, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on, Dr. Ed. Yeah, I'm excited. This, is, this has actually been coming. This interview has been coming uh, probably for a few months in fruition, so I'm so glad that we actually finally got you on the show. Um, and it's a really important discussion, so I'm going to leave that hook for everyone before we, before we get into that. Um, Dr. Byrne, tell us a little bit about who you are, like as a chiropractor, but also as, you know, an aspiring entrepreneur or online entrepreneur as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, first, you know, to kind of hit on the personal side of things, you know, I always want to start out with, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a father, I'm a husband, you know, a person of faith, but then, yeah, also I've been practicing. So I have my, I've started a couple of chiropractic offices from scratch, and then I've really started to kind of scratch this entrepreneurial itch of expanding, you know, as you say, kind of beyond my four walls, um, into the online world. And so we have another bigger, bigger, you know, not maybe not bigger, but a, a different mission there as well, as far as impacting people, their definition, definition of success and, and how they're showing up in the world. Um, so that's really me. I mean, the chiropractic side of things is one thing. The entrepreneurial side, um, is another thing with my podcast and some of the online platforms that we've created. And, and so you, you're also a dad, right? So you're trying, yep. to, trying to balance the, the <laughs> home life, family life. Cause I think the part of the discussion today is going to be an important part of that. And then you have the business business over here. So, so yeah. what you're doing is, is really important to, to help other entrepreneurs figure out and find that balance. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, absolutely. And, and just, you know, kind of the segue into that. So our platform is called life outside the hustle. It's a, it's a podcast, but it's also a, a community of people, and we're trying to spread this message and really, I guess, break through this noise. And especially for, you know, chiropractors and entrepreneurs out there, we're, we're constantly fed this, this narrative of we always have to be grinding. We always have to be working to get ahead. And that's, that's kind of this Gary Vee mindset is what we kind of, we see it. But the problem is, is that people end up sacrificing the things that matter most, right? They, they're taking away time from the family. They're taking away time from their health, from their spirituality, and really just, not giving themselves a chance to, to recharge and reflect and, and relax. So that's what our message is, is yes, we want the high performance part of things, but we want the high fulfillment piece of the puzzle as well. So as we create the proper structure in our lives, that's where we're going to gain the freedom and the satisfaction, the fulfillment as well. So that's our, that's our big message and our big, our big mission, I guess, if you will, going forward. Yeah. And I, I like even before, and I'm like, I, look, I got to stop. Like before we hit record, I'm, I'm like, I got to stop you because we got to be recording what we're talking about here because it's such an important discussion. And it's something that, you know, I, what was it? I posted the other day and I think it was you who posted. You're like, what? You're not, you weren't an, I thought you were an overnight success. <laughs> yeah. The reality is I was an overnight success, but it was like, it was a hustle to get there. Yeah. Yep. But to think that that was four years ago, Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm just now I've just been doing it a lot longer than a lot of other people. Sure. Um, but here's the reality. I'm going to tell the truth. I'll be transparent is I've been hustling my ass off, but I'm mm -hmm. starting to really learn that that's you, know, you can't do that forever. Mm -hmm. like you can't sprint the, the entire race. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and that's the thing, too, is part of this mission, part of this platform that we've launched in the, in the message is that I'm, I'm a recovering hustler, if you will, as well, right? I mean, I've grinded and, and, you know, starting my practice and even starting this online platform, I have to, I have to catch myself because otherwise I kind of naturally fall back into that default mode. You know, probably a lot of the people that listen to this podcast, you know, are, 
are entrepreneurs and chiropractors and doctors. And we've already always been these, these probably like driver mentalities. So it's easy for us to fall into that trap. Um, but I think it just takes really sitting back and evaluating things, evaluating what's important and then starting to align your actions with, with that underlying thought process. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I think, you know, for a lot of the listeners, um, as chiropractors, um, I, I think they can resonate with that is because we're not always the most patient people, uh, <laughs> that, you know, I, I, like we all want stuff. We all want results right away. And sometimes to be able to step outside of that hustle is means also you need to have some patience, but I'm going to bring us back into our flow here and, and ask yeah. you, what is one of your favorite quotes? What is one of the favorite, you know, your, it could be original or someone else's, mm -hmm. um, you know, an affirmation, some positive words for docs today. I'll give you a, a one right away. And this is, I mean, again, on this mission is a Tony Robbins one, but basically success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. <laughs> and that is one that kind of like hits me right at the core. Um, and, and it's important to me because how often do we see people, you know, climbing this mountain only to realize that they're on the wrong mountain, right? <laughs> so, and, and the more that I've, I've really gotten into this, and as you start to become even more successful, you start to realize that a lot of the things that you used for, to define success or use for validation before probably weren't the things that were most important, right? Yeah. Um, so that's why that quote really, I kind of, I guess, kind of hits home with me. Yeah. It's, it's so true though, because you know, there's a big difference between fulfillment and success, isn't there? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I was speaking to someone like a high level entrepreneur the other day and I was asking him some advice about the similar conversation. And he mm -hmm. just said, look, you know, at the end of the day, like at the end of my life, are people really going to remember me for how much money I made or how much I hustled? Or are they going to remember me like the people who will matter are going to be like my family. Those that mm -hmm. that's, what's going to really matter. Yeah. And I think that what? I, I was just going to say, I think you can have both. I think. Yes. Can, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not a zero sum game, right? It's yeah. It's, it's how can you cultivate these things simultaneously? And it's, it's, it's funny because people always talk about this work life balance. I think the key with it is more work life integration. Like mm -hmm. what can I do as, how can I build my business as part of the, too many people are designing their life around their business as the center where they should really be looking at what do I want my life to look like? And then how can I build a business around that? Right? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, this, this couldn't have been an easy, easy process. I mean, like, you know, you, you, you have your practice, your brick and mortar, mm -hmm. you have this, this, you know, inspirational, um, you know, entrepreneurial endeavor. That's a heart driven project that you're working on over here. Mm -hmm. um, family, you know, you have all of this going on. What is, what is one of the biggest struggles that you've had either recently or, you know, possibly a year or two years ago? So I will say probably the biggest struggle I've had in practice. And a lot of people don't know my backstory as far as how I actually got into practice, but I graduated in 2009, which for everybody in the U S and probably the world, I mean, economic times weren't the best we'll say. Right. Um, so I got out and, and I had this mentality that there, I wasn't going to go work for anybody. Right. I was going to start something, but nobody was loaning me any money. I didn't come from a family with a ton of financial means to do this. So I actually ended up, I got $15,000 from my parents and then I took out nine credit cards and I maxed them all out for about 60 grand. And that's how, that's how I opened my first office as <laughs> I actually took my own cards and I would run them on my own terminal to get money to, into my account as cash to be able to pay for things that I couldn't use a credit card on. So um, and I opened in November, I believe of 2010. I mean, and I was out around, I did everything. And when we talk hustle grind mode, I was out there. I was running around putting door knockers on people's doors in 20 degree below weather in Minnesota. I mean, it just didn't, that, that's how I got started. That's how I built my first initial patient base was just gorilla <laughs> talking to people, shaking hands, kissing babies, marketing, because I didn't have any other options. Um, that was probably the biggest struggle because there was a lot of times where you just didn't know how you were going to pay for the next thing. And yeah. somehow the, you know, whether it's the intention or the action or whatever, I would, things just seemed to work out. I mean, they, you would just attract them. And it's probably, it's probably 
almost like I was ignorant about the fact that like, it's one of those things, like it, knowing what I know now, I probably wouldn't have done it the way I did it, but, it, but I, I did it kind of out of blind faith and, and trust in myself that I could do it. And, 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 and the universe ended up delivering it, you know, and I attracted abundance in my practice into my life. So. And you see it like, and clearly you've learned, you've learned some valuable lessons from that. And that's, that's part of what you're, what you're working on today. Yep. Um, where did so you... I guess to answer the kind yeah. of something more recent too, I mean, to kind of branch into the new endeavor that we're going on, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this out there. So you, I've gotten this successful practice. I've built it from, you know, I've actually built two now from, the, from zero up, you know, from scratch, building out the whole place. But then you reach a point and you start to realize that your practice kind of owns you more than you yeah. know, your practice, that, that I just created this high paying this high paying job. I almost felt like I was lied to as like a business owner because you have this image of, of freedom and, and doing what you want because you're the boss, quote unquote. Yeah. But then when you get there, you realize that you're actually probably more trapped than, than your staff and, and your team because they have the ability to go home and shut off where you're always plugged into this and you don't really have the chance to recharge. So it just kind of led to this big state of, of burnout, if you will, um, where I kind of lost the passion to actually be seeing the patients and, and, and for the profession really. Um, and that's what kind of molded and inspired this new thing to be able to take a step back, really focus on get clarity on what I want, what I want to build that starts to reflect in my practice and also in the, in the new business endeavor that we have going on too. Yeah. Beautiful. And, um, you know, it's interesting because like, you know, your story and my story are not on, on the, like they're, they're very similar, except, mm -hmm. you know, one, like basically for me, it was like survival and necessity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I had to make this work. Um, you know, but the interesting thing I see for you in, in this is that it was, it was just basically for you. It was like, no, there's, there's gotta be a better way. Yeah. And, and it was, a, and I remember like, cause you and I had actually spoke, you know, months ago about this and you, and what you would propose or what you thought you were going to do initially turned out to be completely <laughs> different than what you're working on today. Um, Correct. What does that feel like for you? Like to be like, okay, I know that I, like, cause I hear this from doctors all the time, like all the time, every week I get on calls with docs. I'm on a call with a veterinarian tomorrow. Like, mm -hmm. and they love the idea of creating something online of mm -hmm. helping people virtually. Um, but they just, they're not really sure what it is they want to do. And then, and then all of a sudden, you know, for you, you just like, you found it. What mm -hmm. was that feeling like for you? It, it finally, it felt like there was clarity because just to reference kind of backtrack a little bit, what you were talking about is I ended up building a whole, you know, Facebook marketing. I was going to teach people how to do that. And I spent months building this whole thing out. And then when you and I actually sat down and talked, it, you, 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 I remember this vividly. You asked me, do you just want to be another one of these people that teaches funnels? And I went, no, I, I purely did it for the online. I can make some money doing this but I wasn't passionate about it at all. So when we really started to go through some of the exercises that you had had, uh, had me go through, like it, it was finally this feeling, it actually got me like fired up and like passionate. And it, I, I knew I wasn't doing it for financial reasons. I knew it, it, it like when I, when I talk about it, I get emotional. When I talk about it, I, I, I get excited about it. And I know that it's something that I, I want to do long term even if I never made a dollar off of it, it's just something that I really, really enjoy doing. So it's, it's kind of this just massive state of clarity because most people are walking around kind of as these like generalizations, right? What do you want? Well, I want to be successful. Well, what the heck does that mean, right? But it, it's, it's amazing to finally have like a clear picture of like what that actually looks like. Hmm. It's like a calling. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. it's interesting because I had to step back the other, the other week and just really think about, you know, what was my calling, my original calling? And then what was, who are my people? You know, I had this revelation like a week ago and I'm texting Karen from Minnesota. I'm texting Karen <laughs> going, I just realized something, this big revelation, I won't put it here and, you know, in this podcast, but I was like, you know, this is, Kairos are my people. I keep trying mm -hmm. to resist it, but it's when you find <laughs> your calling, when you find your people, when you find, like it's, it's a really, it's, yeah, it's a very um, uplifting feeling. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. here's what I want to do. Cause like some people are probably thinking, okay, what is this all about though? So tell us a little bit more about this, you know, the life outside the hustle. Mm -hmm. Well, really it's just getting, so when we go through this, 
life outside the hustle is just, it's like I mentioned before, it's redefining the, 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 the meaning of success. And this is one of the questions that I ask people right away on my show is, what does success mean to you? But how has that definition changed? How has that shifted? And almost always it's gone from a, an external validation thing, whether it's money or, 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 or cars or whatever it might be. It's, it's gone from this checking the boxes type thing that society tells us we need to do to this internal validation, because that's really what it, what it's mm. all about. It's, it's this state that, that I've begun to refer to as kind of this, this happily unsatisfied state where we're grateful for where we are now, but we still have the drive and the focus to push forward. And when we talk about life outside the hustle, it's about having the structure in place. It's about creating our values and priorities, eliminating the things that don't matter, and then really focusing and doubling down on the stuff that, that, that really is going to move the needle long-term. Okay. It's about working less, living more, and then living a life that truly matters. If right. that, if that makes sense. So that's, that's the messaging that we want to get behind. Yes. There's a time to work. Yes. There's a time to do those things, but there's also needs to be an integration with the rest of your life to support and cultivate those other areas. Yes. Yes. I totally like, I, I love this project. I really do. I may, I may, I may have to take your course. Um, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> like literally, so like not, not kidding. Like I was, I, I'm in Victoria, British Columbia. We live in a certain suburb over, you know, over here and I rented an Airbnb. So I took an Airbnb for three days up until mm-hmm. like today. And I've been downtown next to my office just so I could get work done. Yeah. Like that's yeah. hustle. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> and the thing is like I checked out last night, I went home because I, I miss my family. And, it, mm-hmm. and that's the kind of place where I am. And and the more that I I'm, I learn about these ultra hyper successful doctors, you know, Kairos, mm-hmm. but it's the same in the online business world, is when they get to that certain echelon of success, mm-hmm. a lot of them start to really reevaluate what they want in life. Mm-hmm. And that's why I love this project because I kind of feel like I've got there and I, I don't want to keep trying to keep up with everyone else. But mm-hmm. instead, I want to, I want to just really redefine, like you said, you know, what is, what is, you know, what do I want, you know, for my personal life, but also like, what do I want in my business? And then how can I do it without burning it all to the ground? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, ab- absolutely. Right. And yeah. I think it's, it's just this refreshing, like breath, this breath of fresh air in this, in this entrepreneurial space that has been, been preaching this hustle and this grind. Um, and the sad thing is, is you, if you really look behind the scenes at some of these people that probably have some of this external success, you would see some of the, the cracks in that armor that, that aren't being shared. Um, and that's the reality. If you look at some of these high performers, their health is in the tank. They're, they've been divorced three or four times. And, it's, and, and, and for what, right? I mean, I, I don't know what the exact numbers are, but there's always kind of this, not necessarily a quote, but they talk about like once you like the person who makes $250,000 a year, their lifestyle doesn't change that much when you get to a million. No, you're kind of doing what you want anyway. So what is, what's that worth? What's that? <laughs> what, yeah. what is that gap worth? You know, as far as sacrificing the other areas of your life? Yeah. What is it worth like to just be there to put your kids down at night or be there when they wake up in the morning or, you know, those are the things that I look at like now that are just like, okay, that's what yeah. I want. Yeah. Or to take a vacation or whatever it is. Like it's, it's more time versus, um, or actually I should say it's quality time with my, yeah. Family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so yeah. let, so for the listeners who are, who are like, okay, like I'm hooked. Like, so how, how can they actually start to follow, listen to the podcast, but also, you know, do you have any way that they connect, connect with you? Yeah. So the best way podcast wise, I mean, we're on all the platforms. If you want to head over to iTunes, we're on Stitcher, Google play, um, SoundCloud, we're on, we're on everything. So whether you're on an Apple or an Android device, you, we have you covered there. Um, best place to go to connect with us. And there's some free resources on our website as well. It's just to head over to Brent Um, and you can have that linked up in the show notes as well, as far as the spelling on that. Um, but that's probably the easiest way. And then of course, I always love, you know, connecting with people over on social media. So if you do listen to an episode or you do get some benefit out of it and you want to tag me over there, I love shifting the conversation over there as well. So that we can, we can deep dive on some of those concepts. Or if there's anything that people have questions on or want to hear about, that's the best place to kind of get a hold of me. Beautiful. All right. And so TCB listeners, we'll have a webpage dedicated to our discussion also with Dr. Brent Thierry today. 
And we'll have all the links and resources he's provided. Uh, if you're listening on your mobile, you can actually open your show notes right now and all the links will be right there and you can connect with him from your mobile. All right. So here's, here's what we're going to do. I, I, I'm, I'm, I've started calling it the cheesy TCP time machine because it's kind of <laughs> cheesy now. But we're going to put you in the TCP time machine and we're going to send you back to a younger version of yourself. Okay, so this is back in 09. You just came out of chiropractic college. Okay, you have all the life experience, knowledge, everything that you, you know today. Uh, what would you say to that younger self? I'd probably tell myself that what I think matters really doesn't, really is pretty unimportant. Because <laughs> how many times do we get caught up on things that in the grand scheme <laughs> don't mean anything at all? So I'd probably tell myself to just chill out and not worry about some of those little things that really aren't going to make that big of a difference in the long run. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not get a bigger wallet with, with <laughs> <and> credit cards. <laughs> uh, I probably could have used one more actually, but <laughs> Would have made life I figured out a way to make it work. So <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. All right. So as we kind of wrap up our discussion today as well, um, I love to just really find out, you know, what is it, what is one of the, like a really valuable resource that you love? So it can be an app, can be a podcast you're listening to, uh, it could be a book that you're reading or have read that has just changed your life. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about this too. And there's, I mean, I consume most of my content audio wise. Like I listen to a podcast, whether I'm driving to work, whether I'm working out, whether I'm mowing my lawn, like there's always something, there's always an opportunity to put something good into your head and you, you never know what little nuggets you're going to get. But I also, I do love to read, especially like when I'm winding down for the day, probably my favorite, one of my favorite books, um, is called the war of art by oh, Stephen yeah. Pressfield. I don't know if you've heard of his, yeah. his work, but he has a few different books, but he talks about this concept of resistance and basically resistance is, is that little thing that shows up every time we're trying to, to make progress or, or focus or work and it, it manifests itself in a lot of different ways, but it's that little thing that tries to distract us or keep us from pushing towards our goals. And he just has a, you have to read some of his books. They're really easy reading, but just the elegance and how he puts things, he really puts things in perspective to keep you focused and doing the work and staying on track. Beautiful. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So um, listeners, We'll make sure that we have all of the links and resources inside the show notes, but also on our TCP, so the chiropracticphilanthropist.com uh, page. Dr. Brand, I want to thank you so much for being on the TCP podcast today and for giving back, truly. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a complete honor. Um, I'm so glad we've been able to connect over the, the last months and, and, and year here. Um, and it's, it's truly, like when I say that, like thank you for what you do because you're somebody and this is my shameless plug for you is that you were the one who, who inspired me to start my own podcast and to take that leap and push me in that direction. So I just want to say thank you as well. It's been an honor to be able to come on and share with your audience. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you. Absolutely. So you've heard the struggles, you've heard the successes, and this episode is done. But there's still so much more to come and so much more to learn. Head on over to the chiropracticphilanthropist.com and sign up for our newsletter where you'll receive free practice building tips and strategies, including how to market your practice with your very own podcast and so much more. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time on the Chiropractic Philanthropist.